We're here for the people and communities competency. This is the Microsoft, um, or sorry, the maturity model for Microsoft 365 practitioners call. Hopefully you, you're joining the thing that you thought you were. And we do have Tracy Vandership as our special guest star, as she always is, even when she's not on our call. Um, <laughs> So, so the agenda today is a, a very similar to um, what we what we usually talk about. We're just going to give you a quick overview of the maturity model to catch you up in case you're the this is the first time you've joined us. We'll do a little shout out in picture time because everybody loves together mode for a picture and pretty much not anything else is what I've found. And then we'll we'll talk through the people and communities competency. Tracy's got some great ideas about the you know why do we care about this and what can we do about this from a from an organizational perspective so that we can sort of frame why we'd want a higher level of maturity here. So these are the, uh, th this is the approach and the articles that we have on our Microsoft Docs site. There were links at the end uh, in a resources uh, page uh, to all of this, but you know, the purpose here is to, you know, improve, the, improve our use of the Microsoft 365 platform but really think more about how can we improve the way we think about our organization and and uh, you know the, what the possibilities are that we can use the platform for. So we we try to be somewhat uh, technology agnostic. You, you'll find that the articles that we that we have don't say you know use exactly this for this and use exactly that for that. It's more about you know what are the things are we trying the things that we're trying to accomplish and therefore. Uh, we, we want to move up a set of maturity levels in how we're using the platform. Hopefully it's a way to also help help you sort of benchmark, you know, where are we along the, the dimensions of these competencies? The, the purple column in the middle is the competencies that we've published so far. We've highlighted people and communities because we're talking about that today. We have some competencies that are in progress. If you have thoughts about those, we'd love to hear them. We have some supporting articles that are in that sort of brighter green on the right side, which help you think about, well, it, you know, if, if I'm at this level, how do I get to the next level? Or, or how do I run a workshop, which is a tool that's up at the top middle of, this, of the right side of the screen. So, so you know, this, this is a framework, but it's not a restrictive framework. Some people have told us, you know, they think frameworks are dumb and it be, you become a slave to the framework. Or, or things like that, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. The, the point here is that we wanna give you some tools that you can use as communication mechanisms, both within your team, if you run an intranet or you're in charge of Microsoft 365, if you're on the technical side, as well as if you're on the business side and you need to sort of rationalize how you're using the platform and what you're trying to accomplish and how to do it better. There are a lot of things on this slide, but hopefully I've touched on some of the important ones. Next slide, and I was clicking the wrong place. So, so each of the competencies provides these benchmarks that that you can use to think about what what level are you at, are you current what, what level are you currently on, and where would you like to go? And uh, you know the, the the levels go from 100 to 500, and it doesn't mean that everybody should be at 500. It doesn't mean that everyone starts at 100. You know, your organization might be really organized around content management, for example. So you might just jump right into the platform using the platform at level 300. You may say, that's awesome. That's where we want to be. And you don't have to worry about that particular competency because you've already gotten that one figured out. But there are other competencies where you might say to yourselves, you know, we're just not doing a very good job on this. You know, we don't have, you know, when we to tie it to people and communities. Maybe we don't have enough information about uh, the people who work in our organization. We don't know what their skills are. We don't know their phone numbers. Well, that means that your collaborative opportunities are gonna be very low. So you'll notice that we have some intent words on the right side there that just sort of indicate the kinds of things, the feelings, if you will, that, that relate to each one of these levels. The levels on the left side are taken from the, the uh, capability maturity model that was started by uh, Carnegie Mellon back in the 80s, I think. I never can remember. And it was really focused on, on the use of soft, software and organization. So 
initial manage, define, predictable, and optimizing. We've borrowed those and reframed them for the Microsoft 365 thing. I'm going to stop talking, Simon. I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to do the next slide. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just got back from Canada, so I have no idea what's coming up next. Hey, what's the next slide? Uh, okay, the next slide is the same. Uh, is the same thing, but instead of having these keywords as the intent, we have phrased the keywords in terms of a statement. So it's the kind of thing you might hear from or say to a colleague. And so again, right down at the bottom end, you know, things like, you know, we should every we should ensure that everyone knows everyone's telephone numbers, or we should know everyone knows what the structure in the organization is. That's that's a sort of a should statement not a we know it statement and as you move up um, it might be let's make sure that we've tested that all the telephone numbers are right and all the contact details are correct then everybody has uh, has got their their profile picture in and ex expressed their interests and hobbies and areas of expertise uh, but the the key word there was let's measure let's test as opposed to let's just hope and so this is a different way of, of being able to express these kind of levels to um uh, to people in the organization some people like to think in hard fact terms that's me some people like communication actual communication or at least they like their communication packaged up in different ways and so that's what we've done there next slide OK, um, so this is just some ways that you can get involved and also the way that we like to run these uh, these practitioner sessions and, and other meetings. So the first thing is on the left, there's a, a get involved uh, link. Please do feel free to click that. The slides will be available later if that help. Um, but there's a whole bunch of things you can do. The one that we ask the most is read the competences, give us feedback, even make corrections or, or suggestions via the, uh, uh, the GitHub feedback links. Um, but get involved. Uh, definitely try and promote it to other people. And this has been going on for about a year. And I'm starting to get people contact me and go, oh, you're one of the guys that's done all that great stuff on, uh, on maturity model. It's kind of nice. But actually, it's nice if we're all involved in this. Uh, so make sure that you spread the word. Um, if you want to run your own 365 workshop, so Maturity Model 365 workshop. As Mark said earlier, there's some tooling for that and there's a link to, to how you can do that. We have a bunch of recordings from the practitioner sessions and other things now posted up on uh, YouTube and other places. So there's a link for that. And then I guess just picking up the stuff in the columns on the right, um, these practitioner sessions and anything else that we can do give you an opportunity to hear what Hear what the debate is, I guess. Um, we don't claim that we're the experts in this, although there's definitely some expertise in the room, um, but this is a collaborative effort. And if you're not sure about something, you know, reach out to me, me Mark, anybody else on the team, or indeed anyone that's been involved, and uh, and you know, use it as a safe opportunity to, you know, to ask the questions, uh, challenge the presumptions, or even test it out on us. Um, and that's all, all I'll do on this slide. <laughs> and I've and I've screwed up and I've shared the version that doesn't have some edits I just made this morning. So, you know, there we go. I should probably stop and and start again. So I'm going to do that. Um, except that I don't know how. <laughs> oh, no, I do. I do. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just going to going to present the hopefully the right version here. Uh, it wasn't that different. I just don't want to give you some dates for some things coming up that are wrong, which is the main difference. And it didn't work. So, OK, so future topics. We're not going to do modern infrastructure next. We actually don't know exactly what we're going to do next. And if we ha if you have some thoughts, we'd love to to uh, hear them in the chat today. Um, we'd love to do modern infrastructure, except that we don't actually have that competency well fleshed out yet. So that was an asp aspirational goal for us when we put this together. Started putting the slides together back in January, I think. Um, so there, there are some guidance and some open source stuff that that you can use to help get up to speed to help contribute to these ideas. The you know all the all the articles that we have for the maturity model are stored on the Microsoft 365 Community Docs site, which is part of the Docs infrastructure that Microsoft has. Um, there are two kinds of sessions that can help with that that are both led by the sharing is caring team, a community doc sessions and first time contributor sessions. And those are very old dates because I, then they're yellow because I deleted them and they shouldn't be there. We don't know when the next two are, but keep an eye out for on the PNP site, uh, which is that link, the sharing is caring link 
on the on the right bottom or left. And, yeah, and uh, I can if if you don't mind, Mark, I can interject just yeah. a little bit there. We'll we'll be scheduling those in the next few days. Uh, just as an FYI, we're trying to be sensitive. We know MVP Summit is coming up. We know the M365 Collaboration Conference, the Power Platform Conference. There's a number of conferences coming up, and we don't want to overwhelm everyone. So we're trying to kind of schedule around that. Uh, but be on the lookout. We'll probably be scheduling them for sometime in late April. Right, right. Um, and thank you for everyone who joined us in February. You may see your name there if you're on the call today. Um, Who's taking the picture today? David. I can do Emily. that. Yep, I can do that. Give me just one second to get that up and running. Tracy, I'm sorry we're taking so much time. We we want to hear you. Right. I'm just here for the photo. I know. <laughs> I know. Let me get this loaded. Everyone, everyone's starting to wave, but it's a premature wave. It is. Give me just one second. I will share so everyone can see themselves David, as well. David, you have to say wave, you know, so like everyone knows it's time. Right. No, I will. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> You'll see yourself as well. Right. So. All, All right. right. Camera, so, cameras on if you want your yeah, cameras on. We have a on. few more if anybody wants some opportunity. I see a few rec reprobates I recommend, recognize there. Yeah. Ah. All right. Well, let's start waving everybody. Woo. Ah, we see some more coming in. Excellent. Great to see the community. We could do the Seb thing. As well, right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Got it. All right. Now, you. now we've used together mode for all it's worth. I'm, I really don't know why I'm not seeing the current version of these slides. That's sort of weird. It must, it must not have synced up to the cloud, which is my guess, but we, we'll, we'll get over that. We're all human. We make mistakes, or at least I do. I'm sure it's not you that made the mistake, Mark. It must be something else. We know this. So without further ado, Tracy, talk about yourself a little bit. Who are you? Why are you well, while I wait for the slides to reach um, South Africa, seeing as we're at the bottom of the sea Ah, Well, I'm on the um, slide with your with your lovely face, so speak at that. I'm not there yet, but it's OK. So um, thank you so much for uh, for inviting me to be a uh, mark and being part of this. It's always a chance that people take with me, but if you know me well enough, you should know what you can expect. But my name is Tracy um, van der Schaaf. I always laugh when people ask me how to pronounce my surname because I must probably would get it wrong if I didn't know better. But I always say it's the same sound that you get in skateboard. So when you say skateboard, that's the same way you pronounce my surname, van der Schaaf. That's the easy part. So Tracy so, Skateboard. Um, Got it. Well, absolutely would go for <laughs> Tracy Skateboard. I'm happy with that one. So um, I'm from South Africa. I'm based in Pretoria, which is uh, next to Johannesburg. And uh, I don't know. I've like been part of the best community. I had my like 10 year anniversary last week, where is the first time I ever spoke at a conference, which was incredible. I still can't see the, oh, there we go. Now I can see the slide. So um, it's just reached Joburg in case you wanted to know. So anyway, um, yeah, I love what I do. I love working with people. Um, my life motto is to facilitate the evolution of human capabilities. And, and that's all I strive to do. The products I use is just a byproduct, <laughs> pun intended, but, uh, but it's actually about the people and it's about what we can achieve and, and helping people achieve their potential. So, um, so it was interesting. I'm going to oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a button that says I can take control. Yes, there is. Look at that. And, and you may. I have you I'm on what does control. Microsoft, you're on what does Microsoft say about communities at the moment? I've got it. I've got it. So the interesting thing when, uh, when Mark asked me to join this is that I'm normally quite, um, a rebel against specific frameworks or I'm just against anything telling me to do something, to be quite honest. Um, anything that outlines a way that I have to behave by, it just doesn't work for me. I'm a natural born rebel. And um, but I do stick to things where I can see the value in it. And I think that was important for me as well in some of the notes I wanted to share with you in these slides. So the first one that I wanted to share, because 
don't ever, here's the first life lesson, because there's going to be like 50 of them and it's going to be super fast. Okay. So you're going to have to slow down the recording when, uh, when people can watch it. But here's your first life lesson. Don't ever assume that everyone knows. Because I was just proven wrong again on this call. I thought everyone knows what Mocha is and everyone doesn't know what Mocha is. And I use it on my slides. So we did actually in the in the chat, I don't know if that's always shared with everyone, but in the chat, I did share it. So the first thing I wanted to share with you is what does Microsoft actually say about communities? Um, I'm not talking about this uh, specific practice or this thing that we achieve, but what does Microsoft say about communities specifically? Now, if I look at, uh, at and this is only a subset of uh, the Marka slides, okay, the whole thing's pretty impressive, okay, if you ever get bored on a weekend and you have a glass of wine in your hand, that's what I would watch, okay, is these slides. So um, they do focus on who the individual is, who the team is, who's the community, who's the etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, so there you can see um, is the individual, you know, who am I, what apps do I work with, what do I achieve with those apps? And if you now go one step further, they talk about the 70 20 10, which I think is important with communities. So it's kind of proven. And of course, there's a couple of clever oaks that came up with it. But that 70 percent of our learning comes from um, like, like while we work, OK, like in work learning. So the job that you do, because believe me, most of us aren't employed with a skill. We need to do it. We actually learn the skill to do that job we're employed for while we're doing the job. So 70 percent is while you work is what you're going to learn. 20% is through the engagement with others and the innovation and the learning from. And like Alistair always says, um, learning through sharing. I love that uh, hashtag that I always plaster all over the place. And then 10% of it's actually um, from like formal education. So like going for a specific course or, you know, attending something. But that 20% is what we get from communities and hanging out with the right people and rubbing shoulders and being around people. And that's why community is important for me. So if I look at, uh, and, and of course we're talking in a company level as well, but not uh, not just that. What we're doing right now is community, it's just outside of company borders. But of course a community is uh, specific individuals with a common interest, okay? And that's the, the first thing. And I mean, I know that all of us, we just here for Mark, so that's our common interest. But, uh, but of course, we all have common interests for communities. Now, if I look at a community, um, they kind of uh, the common like characteristics is a, is interest and passion, and that there's normally a facilitator. There's innovation. There's a sense of membership as well. Okay, so there's a group of people that belongs to it. And if you look at the type of uh, things that happens in a community, so like knowledge management and. Uh, like sharing innovative ideas, engagement, okay, collective knowledge, um, even having external participants. Those are the type of things that we achieve through communities. And if we say external, that could be external to your department as well, or external to your business unit. That's something to take uh, note of. So if I look at this community and you look at the different um, apps that's uh, allocated to support these things, of course, Yammer is quite big. Um, when it comes to communities, I use products across the stack, depending on what type of company it is, um, what the size is, etc. It's not always defined that it's only Yammer. Okay, I definitely use a mix of tools when it comes to communities as to what best works for and suits that company. But most of the time in bigger companies, we are talking Yammer. But you'll even see GitHub in there. You're going to see Stream in there as well because... Uh, because we learn through sharing as well. So learning um, through sharing videos and of course SharePoint sitting behind most of everything that we do is an important thing. So that's just from um, from the modern collaboration platform or from Marka, which we did share the link to, um, to look at these communities and how what, what the purpose is and what Microsoft's drive is. Why is a community important? And it's all about knowledge. It's all about learning from each other and, um, and about a sense of belonging and about knowledge sharing and also about building your skill up because I always tell my students the first time you show someone else something else you'll most probably never forget it again okay so the first thing I tell my students is to go debrief go show someone else the cool thing that you've learned and that's also what communities do so the first time I've showed you something on a presentation 
then the next time, and that's how gamification works, okay? It doesn't have to be a badge. It's a feeling that you get with where others got value from what it is that you do, and then you want to do it again. And that's how we get sucked into community, by the way. In case you didn't know how you belong to the Microsoft community, it's that feeling, that buzz that starts, that kind of makes us want to be part of that. So then just also important, as I think many people get uh, confused between the team and the community type of thing. And of teams, of course, should be mandatory. That's more departmental or specific out outcome delivery, where um, the community side is more optional and based on interest and passion, and the larger the community, the better, and then also that the focus is on learning and innovating. It's not specific um, outcomes, you know, it's a different type of molded experience of what it is that we get from it, and engagement is a big word for me um, in the communities. So that's actually what this whole competency is about. It's about communities. It's about making sure that we can measure that and how do we work with people and uh, and how can we engage. So if I now um, look at the why we're doing this, okay? And of course, I've poached slides off the web, but I did reference them. So apparently that's a disclaimer I can get away with. But Josh Burson is actually quite brilliant when he talks about the irresistible organization, okay? So it's about doing the right thing for the right reasons. If we just look at this incredible um, graphic that he's got in his articles and his white papers, these things that makes an organization incredible, then we can say that most of these things, just when we look at what communities delivers to um, our companies, is a lot of this is being addressed. That's actually more than that. I just touched on some of these. But a lot of those things that helps a company become an irres irresistible organization to work for and to be part of is delivered through communities. I mean, we're not doing this because someone said it's a cool thing or someone played golf with someone who has communities in their companies. Because remember, that's how we adopted software before. It's someone played golf with someone. I mean, I think 99% of the company started SharePoint because of that, okay? It came off a golf course. So that's not the reason why we have communities. We have the reason the communities is there's a real reason, there's a real purpose. It actually drives um, the sense of belonging and a happier employees, et cetera. So that was important for me to share with you with why um, the communities is important, of course. And then as part of that, I think something important to take note of you can't start measuring this in your company. So this competency is going to do nothing for you if there isn't a place for it. Many times when I start working with companies, I look at their strategic objectives, I look at their vision and their mission statement. And if I don't see place in there for people to learn and evolve and be part of something bigger, then, um, then it's not going to go somewhere. But a lot of times it's only present there. So the evolving, the digitally transforming, the becoming better, always exists on this side in a company. It doesn't exist on the KPIs and in the person's job description. So even though the company lives this dream and promotes this, it's all about community, it's very seldom reflected in job descriptions and KPIs. Because if you don't make space for it in someone's KPI and their job descriptions, they won't be able to allow time for it. It's a fact. It's the same as with learning. If that's not a bullet on a KPI, on a job description, on a task or an outcome, they will not be able to make time for it. So before you start measuring that engagement in your company, you better go back and make sure that there's time for that. So that's very important for me is are we allowing time for employees to participate in communities? Are we actually allowing for it? Same as with, uh, with learning. Are we really allowing for it? When people say that, Trace, I've just got so much work to do. I'd love to be part of a community and chat and have time. I don't. I'm in meetings back to back all day and at night I sit and um, actually deliver the tasks that I'm supposed to do for my salary. OK, you as a company need to first understand what the value of community is. You can't force your employees to understand the value and then to live it up. It doesn't work like that. So if you're a manager or a team lead or C-level in a company, this drive's got to come from you. If you cannot buy into this, you will not get this right. And you can do as many of these competencies and workshops as you want. You cannot force a good habit in a company if there isn't space for it. So if it comes to the people and communities, okay, what is the most important part of this? What is the most important part of people and communities? And now I'm going to use a very, very special thing in PowerPoint called Morph. Check it out. Check it out. Oh, and it doesn't work in PowerPoint Live. Oh, it didn't work. Well, there's a note for us. It was actually supposed to like morph the word for you, but it is you. So at the end of the day, the most important part of community is, is you. It's not the community. It's not the company. It starts with you. You're the one that like, kind of brings everything together. You should be a catalyst in many forms. 
I'm going to have to like, sorry, contact Microsoft about this. I'm heartbroken about Morph not working in PowerPoint Live. I'm really disappointed. I might have to have a glass of wine soon. So here's another thing that I'd like to share with you is that uh, from myself, and I've got to check my time, is that uh, I started working when I was 15, okay? Not went to university. I started working when I was 15. So, I mean, you have to immediately be able to buy cigarettes, okay? I'm a Gen Xer. That's how we did we rolled, okay? So immediately need to be able to afford a place where I can sleep at night and cigarettes, okay? That's your first focus. And um, so you kind of work yourself into a skill set. And I ended up doing so many jobs in my life, which now is extremely valuable. But I did spend 25 years where I didn't think I was good enough. I never measured up to anyone next to me. So anyone that had had formal education used big words. I didn't understand big words. I didn't understand methodologies. I don't know if Alistair is still on the call, but most of the meetings I had with him, I had to Google every second word that he used. But but I felt so um, so inferior to people around me that could use bigger terminologies. And when someone spoke about prosci or prosky, whatever you want to pronounce it, or ad car or this and methodologies, I was just so afraid because I didn't think I would measure up. So I just came up with this and I said, you know what? No, I'm going to stop this immediately. That the only difference between big and small words is the font size. I'm not going to allow that stuff to make me afraid anymore. I'm not going to be afraid by it. I'm going to try and figure that stuff out. And I'm going to try and see how can I make those big words small for me so that I could understand it and break it down into something that works for me. So that's a very important thing that I want to leave you with before we look at uh, the competency, some advice on it, what the levels are. I don't want you to get stuck in the fact that you're already afraid of this because maybe some of it is new to you. And then also remember, as soon as someone gives me a list of things to do, I'm already afraid. So um, we tend to already feel that we don't measure up. And I think that's a, that's a tricky thing because we all suffer from imposter syndrome, right? And, and just out there, I mean, I don't even know the attendees is right now. You think it gets less. It actually doesn't. The more you know, the bigger your imposter syndrome grows because the more you know, you don't know. And, and so don't ever think it's going to go away. It actually gets worse, imposter syndrome. So, so at some point, you just have to make peace with the fact that you're always going to question yourself and always think that you're not good enough. And that's where community is also important. That affirmation that we get from people around you saying, hey, Trace, that was a good job, man. Oh, man, I really appreciated that. That's the type of thing that helps you kind of step out of that uh, little bubbles of um, imposter syndrome. So first things first is whatever you see, don't be afraid of it. Break it down and make it into something that makes sense to you. I think that's super important. And bite sizes. Okay, so that's that's purely bite sizes, I think, from day one. I still have a other couple of uh, life lessons to share with you as well. But first, we are going to go into um, the different levels and how these things actually impact and how you can measure yourself on these different things. So... With, uh, with anything that you want to measure, oh, I was joking when I said no more life lessons. I'm still going to like come up with them. Is that if you're going to wait until you have all your ducks in a row, and I actually have it as a slide later, but I just fast-tracked it right up front, okay? If you're going to wait until you have all your ducks in a row, you're never going to do this. If you're telling me, Trace, I'm only going to start documenting this when I've got like, when I'm at a certain level and I've got some of the stuff together, then I promise you, you're never going to do this. If you don't start documenting from day one, you can't grow. If you can't start measuring from day one, you can't grow. It's not possible, okay? You cannot wait until you know everything. It's it's completely impossible. It's like building a house. They don't arrive at the open piece of land and dump all the materials needed to build a house to end on the first day. It's not how it works. They start with certain things and then they organize the rest and then they order the rest. So if I look at the different levels, we're talking about community, right? So if I look at the things that's important in community, I think me as a person, my profile, what it is that I do, my skill set, the projects that I'm working on, um, the things that I'm interested in, those type of things, the way that I communicate with people, that's the things that comes to mind for me when it comes to community. So don't get stuck in too much of the detail. Put those main bullets out for you. What is it that's important for me to get community to work? Who am I as a person? Who am I to the people around me? Okay. How can I communicate and work together with them? How can I share content with them for them to learn from? Okay. That's the main things that's most important for me. So if I look at the different levels, 
if we're saying 100 is a is the lowest and we're going up to 500 okay so if we say lowest and that's a terrible place to say because i believe me there's rock bottom that's lower than that okay so i i think 100 is already a good step up okay i meet people that's been on office 365 already for a year and then we hit 100 okay so so don't feel sad if you don't have all those uh, things in a row or all those things in place Many times, the first thing that I see that needs a lot of attention in companies is that AD profiles. Ooh, hoo, hoo. That fight between HR and IT about who takes ownership of it. And then the poor user uses the who bot and he's like, but Mark, you haven't been the CEO for three years. I mean, what's this thing? You know, it's now this person. But, but that needs to be cleared up. And that's not front end. That's not you. That needs to be sorted out on a strategic level in the company. And a lot of times that's lacking in companies. I must admit, I've only been at one company in all my projects where I had that their profiles was working beautifully and it was up to date. I, I just don't experience it because it's always a struggle and the focus area and the purpose is, is pulled incorrectly in the different areas. So I think that's very important is making sure that the basic information is correct. And you might not be able to do that, but maybe influence it and also show because you know how many people doesn't even know about the who bot in teams. Go show the CEO the who bot and profiles that are incorrect because then they'll understand why it's important for those profiles to be up to date and get them to sort that out. There's tools that does it as well or there's uploads above my pay grade, but there's ways to get that to work and to stay up to date because who I am in an organization, my job title, where I'm based, my location is important because it forms my identity. It's how people determine who I am as a person. So first thing is normally is a normally at a hundred level, maybe just the basics of folding, okay? And yeah, not it's updated a, regularly. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Tracy, but you know, based on my consulting experience, most organizations are at level 100 with this. Active directory yeah. data is just plain wrong. So, you know, I look up Tracy and she's she works in the mailroom, but she didn't actually work there. You know, she hasn't worked there since 2008 or her title is wrong, or her phone number is wrong. I can't collaborate with Tracy if I don't know who she is or, or what she's all about. Collaboration is not just the platform. It's how do I get in touch with Tracy? What does Tracy Absolutely. do? What does Tracy know? And that stuff just is not available in, I would say, 98% of the organizations I work with. And they say, yeah. it's broken. Yeah, it's horribly broken. Uh, well, I'm, I'm I'm glad that you share that, Mark, because for a moment there, I thought it's a South African thing. No, it's not. I wasn't and sure it, if it's, it's like... I, I would say it's a global thing. And I think I think that people oh. just don't have the right mindset around that identity data. You know, it used to be just used to, you know, manage who gets into what system. And now it's used for who are you? You know, that people card surfaces all that stuff. Yeah. I don't think if, if I look at this and you're right, I mean, a lot of companies have moved up on some of the other levels, but there's this one thing where they're still stuck on a certain level, right? Is that, so again, life lessons coming, is that I always say, so let's go, you go into a project meeting and the project manager is a real miserable person, okay? Like really miserable, like really steals your joy for that day, is always make a note to think that perhaps that comes from a dark, sad place, okay? All of us react due to um, places that we've been, the ways that we've been hurt on projects or something. You become a bit more OCD about certain things. You become stricter about things. If I think of those organization charge, I want you to also realize that if you look at more modern technology, where we now have a who bot that you can ask questions about the people, that you can look at org structures where it's built automatically if the data is clean and accurate. Remember that there's a lady somewhere in HR called Sarah or a guy called Peter or something whose job it is to create org profiles in PowerPoint, okay? So touching that touches their existence, who they are, what they get paid to do. So we have to have empathy for that as well. A lot of times these systems don't work well because of how jobs are structured around creating that content. So a lot of people doesn't want to let that go. They're going to keep on creating those org profiles. They're going to keep on building those uh, those PowerPoints because that's what they've always done. So have empathy for that as well, okay? Rather teach that person another skill. Maybe they can become part of the HR process that does the like sync up back to AD or something and then replace that creating power. I look, I'm a PowerPoint fan. We know this. 
but all profiles shouldn't be in there anymore. And also the duplication on that. So definitely still seeing a lot of companies where they're all profiles on that level. That's still something that um, is going to be done. We know that emails are still running. We know that they're still communicating. I still have companies with intranets where the communications are still copied as is into an email and sent out globally. I'll go to that intranet and I can see that that page wasn't even accessed. Even though the email links to the page, doesn't matter because all the content's in the email. So again, that's a culture that we have to change. Um, people don't trust the technology. I think if we don't send it via email, people won't see it. But remember, people are actually not even reading emails anymore, which is, uh, is really like a painful process. And then, of course, as well, on that level, if I just think of the, the the Active Directory information about the people, okay, if we say your email address must be correct, thank goodness, because otherwise you can't receive emails. But maybe your telephone number is wrong or your job title is wrong or the location where you are is wrong. But we're not even talking yet about the additional information that can get, get added, which actually adds um, benefit in the company. So on a basic 100 level, it's like they say, it's business as usual, but it's actually poor business as usual. Okay, It's not business as usual, it's just getting by. And that's a typical intent is I just do what it takes to get it done. And it's also what happens at this level is we're doing it this way because we've always done it that way. That's a big thing that I see at a hundred level is we're doing it this way because we've all of that. We can't take all, all profiles out of PowerPoint, Tracy, the whole company will fall flat because we've always done it this way. If we go um, a level up now, if we go to 200 level, we're obviously starting to look at, is it possible to start maybe cleaning up Active Directory? Is there a way to at least keep the basics um, up, to uh, you know, up to scratch and say that the profiles are um, like kept up to date? But also what I start seeing, and I always look at pilots, okay, you can't do this with the whole company at once. You first have to convince a small group that then leads by example. If you can convince a small group and pilot group, if you can convince a small group that it actually works and that they like and they see and they're happy with what they experience, that sells on its own. So can definitely start at uh, at the 200 level. We have small groups that are starting to adopt this, small groups that are starting to look at uh, maybe filling in my profile, but it's not something that's a company-wide thing. It's not a something that's being adopted on a strategic level, if that makes sense. It's much more smaller. It's a smaller audience that's starting to look at it. Now, of course, we're still getting emails going all over the show, but maybe now you already have some people that is on a team somewhere or maybe a Yammer group or two has started up. So you definitely have the smaller areas where people are starting to adopt the technology and you're starting to have some of that buy-in, but it's not something that's visible on a company level and it's definitely not documented as a, as a strategy or a governance or a guideline in the company. So that's definitely, I don't know, Mark, from Simon, your side, if you wanted to add something to the 200 level, yeah, I think, you know, you're, at least you're starting to think about solving these problems, right? Just saying their problems is the 100 level. It's like, you know, yep, it's screwed yeah. up, you know, but when you're starting to, to have the conversations, you're starting to figure out, well, who in HR actually knows how to do this? Who in IT is, is responsible for Active Directory? Yeah. And you're starting to get those conversations going and you're starting to improve the, the general accuracy of the information about people. That's that's a huge start, and you're st you know, and and the and the community spaces are things that you know you you can have a community space and people can start showing up, but if you can't tell much about them, it's not going to be as effective. Yeah. So you know, all of this sort of starts to gel as you go up, um, go up the levels. I think at level two hundred, you're sort of in a transition phase with this competency. Mm -hmm. You're starting starting to make good improvements. You've got some consistency in some places. Yeah, yeah, but it's not consistent think, everywhere, and that undermines people's confidence in in the way right. it works. If it's not consistent and it's not comprehensive, then then people's confidence is incomplete. And I think it also speaks to the culture of the organisation. They haven't really uh, uh, adopted that as a cultural norm. It's just something that people have asked, been asked to do. I think also, and I mean, like what I said on the first slide is we've always done it this way. Now we're saying we've always done it this way sometimes. But what I see happen very often as well is that people will slide after they've reached this level. If you don't from here, when you start having these little fires that are burning, if it doesn't start forming habitual usage and it doesn't become part of a culture, you'll easily slide back. So think of it, think of level one is um, I've realized that I want to be more fit and I've bought a treadmill and that's where it stopped. Level yeah. two, I've now realized that, okay, so I actually need to exercise 
and I might have to exercise a couple of weeks, but then it stops. So now if we go to level three, I realize that if I don't have a schedule that I fill in every day that tells me I've exercised three times, I'm going to slide back again and then realize I haven't exercised this week. And that's typical with any habits that we build um, in life. It's the same process that we go through. So your intent is there already that you want to change, but it's a small group that's changing. And if they don't get the support and the guidance and the structure underneath it, um, it'll slide. It'll slide back. This is not a level that you can stay on forever. I don't see this being a level that people stay on. If you can't push to have this move to level 300, it's a difficult level that you stay on. You always slide from here because you don't have the bigger buy-in, if I, if I think of it that way. So, of course, it's not a bad level to be on. I just want to put it out there, okay? It's not a bad level to be on, but there is additional things that we can do. It's like first just having Outlook. If you think apps, I just have Outlook, and then I go, okay, I've got Outlook now, and the people and the WhoBot that tells me a bit about people. Then you start adding teams and Yammer. Then you start adding policies and guidelines and governance and things like that. So each of these has little stepping stones that we can go into to actually add more to help you push yourself up because there is supporting pillars that you can put in underneath this because on its own, it won't sustain. Yeah, you know, you know, it, 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 on, on some other level, you know, we on, on level one, some other level, on level 100, we're really talking about sort of, you know, if you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that's like the food and shelter level, right? Yeah. And and now we're now we're sort of at the level where, you know, we can we can operate as a society and it, you know, level 300 is is where we, we we actually can accomplish some things. But if you think about people in communities, the, the, the stuff you really want to accomplish is not making sure someone's phone is right. It's it's actually yeah. getting people to interact and have and innovate and and uh, you know come up with great new product ideas and you know all that great stuff. But if the basic building blocks aren't there, it just makes that so hard. So by the time you yeah. get to level 300, you're starting to see some of those sparks, right? You're starting to see yeah. some some serendipitous events. You're starting to see some some uh, good outcomes that people can say, well, you know, I can't I can't necessarily say it's worth this amount of money, but I can tell you it was a good thing. Anecdotes do matter. And, you know, you're going to start hearing some really good anecdotes at this level. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Go ahead, Tracy. No, no, not at all. I mean, we're doing this together. We're a community, right? That's what it's all about. Wait, wait. You said you said Maslow's. Are you saying that we're only getting Wi-Fi and wine at level five hundred? What what is this? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're we we we've got the we've got the wine here because you know stuff's all the way lying from level one. Stuff's, stuff's <laughs> lying around the cave. It's fermenting. You know. <laughs> it's just not in a in a in a nice shelf, and it's not refrigerated for one of the some of the ones that needs to be. Okay, so so if we let, then look at 300, okay, it's, it's like it's like we all are adding to this. I mean, we kind of had the we can work, then we started looking at, listen, we're starting to identify, we're starting to be aware. So level 200 is nearly awareness for me. It's that you're starting to become aware that things can be done better. You're starting to implement small little changes. If I then get to 300, this is definitely where um, I then see that maybe some of those things that's been identified, like, again, the properties about the people, the how they can connect to each other, their profiles. I mean, we're putting a lot of pro focus on profiles, but it isn't just about the profiles. Okay, But the profiles is a very big supporting framework for who we are, our identity and our connection to other people. Because if I think of those profiles as well, now, let's say level 100 and 200, I was Tracy. I'm this person, I work at that branch, and this is my email address, okay? So now, um, as part of some people starting to adopt this and to understand that there's value in investing in this framework to uh, to broaden who we are in a company, our identity, I can now go and fill in properties on my profile that says I am interested in these type of things, or maybe my hobbies are KTM motorcycles and drinking wine, and now I can pick up like-minded people in the company because that's what work's supposed to be about or these are the projects that I've worked on, or these are the skills I have. Especially in bigger companies, we see so much duplication happening because you think you're just this one person in the basement doing this job and not even realizing that across all the hierarchies, there's similar people like you. And together we can work smarter, not harder, right? So it's also supporting to our jobs to actually learn more about people and what it is that makes them tick, what their skill sets are, because we can achieve more and we can duplicate less. I think that's important. So definitely for at, at this level, I think 
the identity of the people are are supported better. Um, who we are and how visible that is in the company and how that's used in the company as well to find people, to see the value of that, your things are updated. But then also, if we look at the community spaces, now again, there's multiple options, okay? So, so you could have started using Teams straight from day one, okay? You could be level 100 and using Teams, okay? There's, you can use things and you can use things efficiently and you can use things for the right purpose. But at, at this level, I definitely see the products being used efficiently and effectively. So that that there's a specific audience, there's a specific product, and it works well for um, that specific audience. So again, I'm talking Teams and Yammer because it could be one of both for me. It's definitely not a specific choice between them. It depends on the community, how they work together. But you now start having specific, I think, people working together. But this is also where I'm documenting our intent and that leads to measuring whether we're successful or not. And I mean, that's why this competency is important as well. But but if you start having those things um, and you can start saying that, listen, this is our kind of like rules of engagement or these are good guidelines for when you want to have a forum or a community or these are things that maybe you should consider when you do those. Then you start having structure to things. So definitely at level 300, I see the structure starting to come out more where um, people are starting to understand what the processes are. They're starting to follow some of the processes, but that's also starting to help less mistakes happen and less slides happening on whether we're adopting um, working together as communities. So uh, let's take and a look. You, from, from, from a community perspective at this level, you're likely to be, you know, oh, who do I know who has this expertise? I'm going to go and talk to them. I'm, but it's more, you know, it, you know, I'm, I'm asking people to join that community. The, the community is is self-forming it's not something yeah. where the technology is starting to say oh did you know that tracy's also interested in which is what i think we start to see more at the next level level You're 400 right. you know where where maybe we have v v topics running so oh geez i didn't know tracy knew something about this topic or or simon seems to have a lot of documents that are that are relevant for this concept maybe i should talk to him so, so you know, we're 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 not necessarily letting the the technology do things for us. We're using the technology to accomplish things. That's a difference. And I think it, when we get to level four hundred, click that button, um, Tracy. Um, yeah. Then then <laughs> we're you know we're starting to see uh, outcomes that are generated by the system, but we're also starting to measure that effectiveness. Yeah, I think what uh, what you just said about. Um, the technology is not pushing it yet. We're giving the input into the technology, but we have to give that input for the technology to be able to give right. us that input again. That's that cycle that you have to run through. It's like for years, people have said, and that's why a lot of people kicked against Yammer, you know, because Yammer was sold into companies as a tool that fixes communication problems. And that's not true. It's definitely not true. So so this is us investing in um, investing intellectual property and who we are and the information that we work with and the knowledge that we share with the product into the product into our communities but then that is uh, where we start getting the benefit so definitely at level 400 we start seeing the benefit now i'm definitely not an expert on the topics level people can more people can add on that but um if i just think with how technology starts giving back to us i mean if i think i scared people are of delve because now everyone can see my documents and that's just uh, not having the knowledge about it. But how you now start seeing like, hey, Trace, you know, here's a document your team's working on. Or when I book a specific meeting, just as an example, and it now gives me supporting documents to that or something. So that's exactly the same with the communities is that the more we put into it, the more we put into who we are and the way that we actually collaborate with each other, the more the system can support us and give back to us. So um, I think the discoverable and the search is an important thing. Because, uh, and you will see it in my next couple of slides, I'm not going to share too much about that. But again, we have to put the effort in. Many times with these systems, it's nearly mechanical in the beginning. There's a, there's a small subset of people that has to mechanically do certain things so that that smooth habitual usage can start happening. It's not something that just starts happening when you put the uh, switch the product on. It definitely doesn't. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it, a lot of scheduled kind of ways, even with communities. 
It's a lot more mechanical in the beginning because we know that there's value in it. So a small group of people is going to understand the value that's in it. But we need to get to a point where a larger audience buys into the value for it. And eventually also your management and the company buys into it. But there's effort that you have to put into on a scheduled mechanical way to make sure that that engine starts running. Because on its own, it's not going to start running. On its own, it's not going to do those things. So flourish, big, wonderful word for me in communities, flourish, okay? Because... Um, it's like, I'm not great with plants though, okay? I buy them to kill them. It's a thing that I do, it's a hobby of mine. So um, if I think of plants, they always say that some plants flourishes in a small pot. Some plants' as roots likes to be in a specific pot size and that's where they grow really well, okay? And that's how governance works for me. People think so negatively about governance and remember now from level 300, we definitely started putting some procedures and guidelines and things in place. I'm not saying the whole world follows it yet, but we've got something in place, you know, we're trying to make it more natural and part of the process and part of the community and part of the knowledge sharing, but it's still a physical document. If, if I think of how... And even if I think of the teams that I work with, people work better, are happier, um, learn better, share more when they're in an environment where there's clear guidelines and um, and governance. OK, and that sounds crazy, but we actually flourish under that. We flourish under certain rules that are put in place because it also gives us knowledge. So if we don't have governance, then I don't know when I'm allowed to do something or not to allow us to do something. I'm going to live in this fear the whole time, whether I'm doing something wrong, should I do it this way? I'm going to waste a lot of time. I'm going to duplicate a lot of things. So the fact that we say flourishing under governance means that things now become more consistent where people are just following it because it works. It's not that enforced anymore. It just works. And that's where the flourishing comes into. So, again, being able to find the people, I think that's um, very important, but not just on the job title that they do. It's about who they are, the skill they add, the experience they have, the projects they work on. Because for many, many, many years, the only thing we focused on was job description. OK, that was the thing we focused on was job description. And now from level 300 into 400, um, it's where we are as a person that starts driving the conversations because I'm much more than just my job. I'm much more than just my job. A lot of people think I'm just a trainer and that's the worst mistake I could ever make. Training is one of the services that I deliver and maybe my job title in a company could be training, but that's wrong. If you had to judge me or use me in a project or engage with me because of a trainer, and this is where I see that value starting to come out. Staff photos is always interesting. And uh a lot of companies do them, a lot of companies don't. They allow people to do them or they don't allow them to do them. I think it's very important to have those. But uh, but I kind of like um, the animated star photos more than the actual photos. But that's just me. Um, anything else you want to add on uh, 400? And Alistair just went on camera, so I'm glad. I'm scared he's got something to say. But uh, anything else we want to add, Mark? Well, I will just no? pick up the question about uh, photos. There's really solid research on that that if you add a, even a static picture of somebody, which can come from a profile photograph, it increases uh, somebody's um, engagement in a conversation by about 20 to 30 percent. Absolutely. And it's the same with video on calls. It's the yep. same concept. So I've I'm, got that I'm, cartoonify app or something that makes you look like, I don't know, some princess in a like Disney movie. So my profiles at customers looks like that. It's quite cute. Ideally, kind of like I, I, ideally, it looks enough like you so that we know it's you. Yeah. So I, I am going to point out we've got five minutes left, so we probably Ooh. should zoom a little bit, so to speak. Yeah. Um, how much I, I cannot even talk about level 500 because I, I that's so far ahead of where yeah. I've been in companies. Well, if you think so about you, it, you know, the, I, so the, the systems start to to heal themselves, right? It does think maybe you set up something that's, you know, that prompts somebody, hey, have you got a new mobile phone in the last six months? You, you you suggest things to people, you know, hey, there's a community out here that you really might like. So 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 we start to have have some, um, you know, almost AI like capabilities that that is starting to help people stay current, stay yeah. effective, stay involved. And, you know, to be honest, not a lot of organizations ever get to this, but that doesn't mean it can't be an aspiration for for some. So, yeah. you know, th that continuous improvement idea, you know, that you know, 
it's, it applies just as importantly to the data that's in Active Directory as it does to are the right people in this community. Is the community Change. topics have has the has the focus of this community shifted over time? Should we be inviting new people in? Are there new topics coming up in that community that that might uh, be served better by having more management oversight? You know all that kind of stuff that happens as 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 the community interactions involve evolve, uh, not involve. Absolutely. So. Um, I'm going to very quickly just slide through my last ones, my last life lessons that I wanted to uh, to tell people. And that is that very importantly is products don't fix problems. People fix problems with products. So don't make that mistake. I mentioned that during the slides as well. It's just putting the product down. It's not going to make communities flourish. OK, so definitely don't make that mistake. And then um, this is a book that I'm actually busy reading. I'm not good at reading books. I'm better at buying books and giving them to people. but um, one of the things that got very stuck with me is if you want better results, forget about setting goals, focus on the system instead. And that kind of made me rethink a lot of things that I do in my life. We tend to focus on, well, I want to run 5K a day. I want to be an X amount weight. I want to only eat 1,200 calories a day. That's goals. Rather focus on the systems, which is exercise for happiness, eat healthy, sleep enough, practice self-love. And if you focus on that as well, on the systems and not the goals, in, uh, in building better communities, then you'll achieve whatever goal it is that you set out to. But don't focus on the goal. Focus on what it is that you want to achieve. Focus on the system and the goal will follow. So that's quite important for me. Then um, when it comes to a uh, don't wait until you have all your ducks in a row. But um, imagine I went to Google and I had to search for the maturity model and I found no results. Now, that would have happened if no one ever documented anything. So don't be that person. If you don't document something, you can't measure something. I, I panicked when I, I panicked when I when I saw this slide, I panicked. I actually went to Google and <laughs> searched, searched for that string. And it's like, oh, thank God, it actually does come up. <laughs> yeah, I did exactly the same. <laughs> So yeah, if you don't document things, people, you can never measure it, but then you also don't leave a legacy for others behind. So document your process, document your findings, document the process that you go through. And then also baby steps. There's a reason why ladders have certain length of steps or the, the heights between them, okay? So if you look at these products that you can use to help you in this journey, I'm not saying that's the order, then um, baby steps are much easier. If you don't put those big goals, ahead of you, you might slip and not be able to reach the next one and then you lose hope and you don't think it's possible. I've already spoken about getting your ducks in a row. If you wait until you know everything, you'll never get started. If you wait until you know everything, you'll never get started. And that's uh, me getting over to you. How's that like going right up until the end? Yeah, perfect. And uh, so that's a that that slide has a link to the maturity model uh, article for people and communities, which is where the excerpts that we were talking through came from today. And here are some more links that will be helpful for you if you want to continue on your journey with the maturity model. Um, if you uh, would like to join us next time, it'll be April 19th, same bat channel, same bat time. Of course, we have daylight savings time things going on around the world, so sometimes that shifts things in odd ways. Um, but we'll be here. We're not quite sure what the topic will be, but trust us, it'll be something uh, that is just fantastic. And if you don't show up, you're going to miss it. So thanks very much, Tracy, for, for joining us today. Awesome stuff. I mean, I think you really brought a lot of, of uh, depth and color to talking about this, that, that, you know, that that's exactly what we knew you would do when we, when we invited you on. So hopefully well, this is helpful for, for everybody. Yeah, we we see some very positive comments in the in the chat. So you you know, great great work, Tracy. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>